All right, and here we are with the actual box. I'm actually using the Sony ZV-1 as the camera for this unboxing, the overhead rig. So if you wanna get a little bit more information about this brand new Sony vlogging point and shoot camera, well, if that video is available, you'll see the links in the description down below. But this particular box, yes, holds the LG Velvet, a highly anticipated phone uh, that I know a lot of us want to see in more markets. So let's just jump right in. Also, it's a velvet box, listen to this. For some reason, can't really get enough of that. Okay, <laughs> into the lid we go. Bam, velvet. So they cut all of this velvet out for this particular box to go right in. But there's a little bit more. Let's go ahead and do this pull tab and bam. L means premium, G means smooth, vel means luxurious, vet means sleek. And I'm glad that I just made the cut, 13 out of 15. <laughs> Popping right into there, got ourselves some Specific cases for it, I'm gonna start with those. We have this design skin, uh, has some leather on there, and obviously is ready for those teardrop camera modules that are all in this large pill of the case. This one's pretty cool. I mean, you guys know that I usually am a big fan of pop sockets and whatnot. This kind of tries to be a little bit like a good grip case. So you got this strap right here. That's actually quite fashion forward. Uh, I know that this phone is supposed to be fashion forward, but since this phone comes out of Korea, an Asian market, in Asian markets, stuff like this is very common. And it's kind of a travesty that we don't see more of these in the West. This is exciting. We have ourselves a bamboo ink, uh, a bamboo pen. The reason why this is in here is because the velvet and the dual screen case actually uh, support this level of stylus support. And of course we have the dual screen. This one I wanted to open immediately. I gotta do this before the 4K recording limit. <laughs> Bam. It's a white dual screen. Like, that's so cool. I love that. <laughs> it's something a little bit different for a feature from LG that is a little bit different. Comes with a little charging module. This is the... Uh, this is the magnetic charging module that will go right into the uh, port. And that's obviously because the port here, USB-C, goes right into the actual LG Velvet unit itself. But still, I'm, I kind of adore the fact that the dual screen actually just looks different in general. Like, it's a nice accented color. That does it for our Velvet box. Still a nice texture. Easy open. I'm not going to be getting that super awesome sort of like gradient color that this velvet icon has. Instead, I have this greenish. Bam. Ooh, yeah. This feels quite nice. Oops. You got a curve on the front, curve on the back, so having it be a little bit more narrow actually helps. Just completely flush over there on the top left corner, those cameras, that raindrop design. These are black. Stark contrast to the other items that are in the box, including the dual screen case. One thing I like about these is that it is a braided cable. Actually, why don't we go ahead and open up the pen? I'm actually personally very curious about this one. Ooh, there's a battery that's supposed to go inside. Okay, I see you. This is one of those moments where you kind of wish that uh, something like a stylus like this would also double as a regular pen. I would use this in every single notebook that I have. Not that I use notebooks as often as I used to. Now finally, uh, I think I'm gonna pick this case to open up for this video, at least for now. Oh, okay, got a little bit of an elastic there. And it looks cool, like it just got a different look to it. It's a little bit more stylish than your typical. Sorry, LG Velvet, gotta cover up your beautiful sheen. It would happen in the dual screen case anyway, but that's the other reason why I love the fact that that's, that case is white. I think I would actually use this more often. Definitely would make it so that my phone won't just fall flat on my face when I'm in bed. If this phone does start to come out in more markets outside of uh, Korea or just the Asian market, it'll be nice because we need more fashion forward, more stylish devices. Having different looks is what differentiates many phones from one another and LG is doing a good job by creating this line, the Velvet. Okay, so here we go. Going to talk about my top five concerns about this phone as I sort of show you my first impressions, my first initial setup. But the first thing that I want to say is probably pretty obvious. I hope this phone is available in more places. The fact that I even have this phone at all kind of says something, but then again, everything in the box was from Korea. <laughs> so it's still unclear about whether or not this phone will actually make it to the US, especially when you have things like the Pixel 4a, whenever that finally comes out. And of course, everyone's chasing what the iPhone SE reminded everybody. It's that you can get a good experience without having to shell out over a thousand dollars. 
Now, to be fair, the LG V60 ThinQ kind of proved that LG is capable of actually getting the price down. That is a full-on flagship phone that is still cheaper than most of its competitors. Now, the LG Velvet seems to have a slightly different philosophy than that, and I think that's the reason why it might be a bit of a bummer. I just mentioned the cameras, and this is one of my concerns for pretty much any LG device. Even though LG phones have been touted as creator-forward phones, but usually with LG phones, I'm just worried that the front-facing camera is too much of an afterthought. You do want to be able to have good selfies, you want to be able to get good video recording for things like IG stories, and usually LG is not really up to par with that. Now, to their credit, LG have kind of rectified all of that with the most recent releases. Uh, the V60 ThinQ in particular had really good front-facing camera video, and I used those 4K clips for my IG stories, and I actually got DMs saying, wow, what camera was that? I want to know what phone that is. Now, the good news is you still get 4K recording on the front, and I'm showing you an example of it right now. Let me know what you think about this so far in the comment sections down below. Uh, it's going to be pretty much the only camera sample that I show in this video, but I just wanted to illustrate how the front facing camera can be a bit of a concern, especially for someone like me that likes to vlog. Look how tight this lens is already. I will reserve my judgment until I actually do my real world camera test and do my final coverage on this phone, but let me know what you think about this so far. Related to that front facing camera is my concern that the notch on this phone will be a little bit annoying. Even though this display has curves on the side and it's a little bit taller, there are certain things about it that already kind of catch your eye. The first thing that catches your eye is this huge dip right here. And even then, I'm on the first screen where you personalize the phone and you can either have that notch, that big cutout at the top, or you can have a big black bar that basically means you have much more bezel at the top. I don't think I'll get that annoyed by it. After all, we've been dealing with punch holes and notches for so long now. We get very few phones that have just a full screen experience uh, without having to emulate it, of course, like this. Uh, but honestly, it's, it is one of those features that I am going to end up noticing all the time, especially since the screen on the LG dual screen case has the same exact dip. And in relation to concerns regarding the daily experience, my other concern is one that I have often with LG phones and it's the software. The LG UI could be a lot worse. It is not the worst Android iteration out there, but as you use it every single day, there are just little things about it that after using other operating systems kind of irk you. Mainly the fact that LG's UI does need an overhaul, and it's looked this way for the most part for like the last three to five generations, with very few changes in between. It's great that LG is finding ways of revamping their design. I know a lot of people are really excited about the way the phone looks on the outside. Now it's just time for us to see if there's anything that's different on the inside. And now for my final concern with this phone, uh, it is something that I'm going to really test in my real world camera test, but it's the rear cameras. I get it that the cameras have to be one of the main places that you might need to skimp on the specs in order to make the price lower. In this case, it's kind of following a template that we've been seeing more and more in, let's say, the Chinese phones that we've seen under like a six or $500 price point. You have a main sensor that is quite powerful and then that power just dips significantly the moment you get to the next lens. It's not to say that the ultra wide lens is going to be bad just because it's at 8 megapixels, but it doesn't really bode well when historically when you have that significant of a dip, it actually does show in your final results. And then finally you get actually a 5 megapixel depth sensor, which is great I guess because you usually get a 2 megapixel depth sensor. Obviously for a person like me that's just intrinsically keen on camera quality, I mean even in this video I'm using this particular unboxing as a way of testing the Sony ZV-1 that you're watching right now. I'm always going to remember how I felt about the shooting experience both both in photo and video. So I'm a little bit concerned that the camera experience on this is just going to be lacking uh, aside from what I know LG is capable of. But in any case, those will be my concerns with the LG Velvet that I of course will be testing out and seeing if they're actual problems. There might be a few concerns that you have that I didn't talk about. Let me know what those are in the comment sections down below. Uh, maybe you want to talk about the price. Maybe you are a little bit worried about the Snapdragon 765G. After all, it's not an 865 and Lord knows I'm spoiled by the highest end processors with all the phones that I review. So this might be a radically, well, hopefully not radically different experience. Feel free to have those conversations in the comment sections down below, and at the very least, drop some likes on this video. If you want to keep up with all of my LG Velvet coverage, you can see things like my real-world camera test, I'll probably do some sort of gaming video, especially since the dual screen is in the mix once again, and you know what, I gotta say one more time, this is a great color combination here, it just makes it look different, it's not just a grey or black dual screen case, it stands out, and it should, because it's a feature that literally, for LG, stands out.
I've been rambling at this point, but if all of that gets you hyped for the rest of my videos about this phone, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you're new here, thank you so much for sticking around. Until my next video, I would just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.